Whether it's mentions of giants found in the history books or real living people who were some of the tallest ever recorded, let's dive right into this list. Here are the top 10 terrifying giant encounters throughout history. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Robert Wadlow. Starting off with a man who is recognized as being one of the, if not the tallest man ever. Robert was born on February 22nd, 1918, and although he was an average size at birth, by age five, he was already five foot four. Like, that is almost my height. Imagine an actual toddler walking around the size of a grown man. New definition to the terrible twos. By 17 years old, he was standing at 8 foot 1, making him one of the, if not the tallest teenager ever. But he certainly was the tallest man in the end, as he grew to be 8 foot 11. His huge appetite had him consuming 8,000 calories a day, but being this tall isn't all glitz and glamour, and it can come with some serious side effects. He had trouble walking because of his fast growth, and this required him to have braces on his legs as well as to use a walking stick. Unfortunately, an ill-fitted brace would eventually lead to his very untimely death. In 1940, Robert received a new leg brace that didn't fit properly, and just one week later this brace caused a blister. Seems like a minor inconvenience, but this blister went on to become really infected. This infection very sadly went on to take Robert's life at the very early age of just 22 years old. In our number 9 spot today we have the Ancient Giant. Back in 1991, researchers were excavating a necropolis in Fidene, which in ancient times would have been a territory that was indirectly managed by Rome. During this excavation, experts came across a tomb that was abnormally long, and after examination they too learned that the bones were also so unusual. This discovery would later go on to become the first complete ancient skeleton of a person with gigantism. Measured to be 6 foot 8, this person would have been a giant in the 3rd century AD in Rome, where the average man stood about 5 and a half feet tall. This team was able to confirm this gigantism diagnosis when they found the skull, although they were pretty certain beforehand due to the size difference seen in this set of bones compared to the average bones from the time period. Although this discovery is an incredible one, we still know very little about what life would have been like for a giant in ancient Rome. In our number 8 spot today we have John Rogan. John is the second tallest man known in history. Born in 1867, John grew to be 8 foot 9 and a half inches, which is second only to Robert Wadlow, who we already talked about. John was born in Tennessee and was the fourth of 12 children. He grew extremely rapidly, and unfortunately, this led to ankylosis, which causes abnormal rigidity in the skeletal joints. By 1882, this sadly left John unable to walk or stand. John was still able to make a living despite this mobility issue, and to do this he sold portraits and postcards at the train station. Many offers came his way to perform in the circus and side shows, but John declined them all. It is said that John used a goat pull cart as a wheelchair, and that everywhere he went he was the center of attention, not only for his height, but because he just had a big and lovely personality. There is a record stating that John's maternal grandfather was also a giant, requiring a larger saddle when riding a horse, so it is thought that perhaps there might have been been some genetics at play here. John lived until 1905, and in that year he passed away on September 12th. In our number 7 spot today we have Anna Haining Bates. Anna was born in Nova Scotia in August of 1846, and by the time she was 22 years old she was already standing at a height of 7 foot 6. At age 16, Anna went into show business because it was very clear she was taller than the average female. She began touring around and in 1965 had a frightening moment at Barnum's Museum when it caught fire and she was too tall to escape through a window. She thought she had met her end because the stairs were on fire, but thankfully she was saved when employees broke the wall down and she was lifted out with a crane. In 1871, Anna met another super tall person named Martin Van Buren Bates, who was also known as the Kentucky Giant and who was 7 foot 8. The pair got married and were often exhibited at circuses as the tallest married couple in the world. Anna ended up passing away in 1888 at the age of 41. In our number 6 spot today we have Don Kohler. Don is a man who was born in the United States in 1925 and he lived until 1981. Don is another one of the few people who can be added to the list of humans who were able to reach over 8 feet tall as it is recorded that Don grew to be 8 foot 2. Don and his twin sister were born to parents who were slightly above average height. His mother was 5 foot 10 and his father was 6 foot 2, but Don was the only one in the family at the time who reached these record holding heights. Don's twin 
Ben's sister grew to be five foot nine, which means that there was a distance of two feet and five inches between them, which is a record recognized by Guinness. Don explained that the most difficult piece of clothing to find to fit his size was socks. And thankfully, later in his life, a hosiery company in Pennsylvania started custom making him socks. How nice is that? Later in his life, Dan would unfortunately suffer from kyphosis, which resulted in some severe curvature of the spine. At 55 years old, Don passed away from a heart condition, and as per his wishes, he was cremated and then had his ashes spread on Lake Wisconsin, where he just loved to fish. In our number five spot today, we have the biblical giants. There are tons of mentions of giants in the Bible, with the most famous probably being Goliath. Samuel 17, 1 to 58 says, quote, And there came out of the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. There was even the mention of the Amorites, a race of giants, 80 different times. People who study the Bible estimate that the heights of these guys would have been somewhere from 60 to 30 feet, but some mentions claim that the giants were as tall as cedars, which could make them somewhere from 50 to 100 feet tall. Either way, it's safe to say that they were towering and they were terrifying. In our number four spot today, we have Joseph Edward Beaupre. Joseph is a man who was actually born in my home province of Saskatchewan in 1881, so imagine my shock when I realized that I had never heard of him before. Joseph's parents were average height, so of course they were surprised when by age nine, their son had already outgrown them. At the age of 17, he stood seven foot one and is said to have been able to lift an 800 pound horse. By the time 1904 rolled around, Joseph was eight foot three and he tried to become a cowboy but realized that this probably wasn't the career for him considering his feet touched the ground while riding a horse. At 21, he joined the circus, but as one can imagine, this took quite the toll on him, and it's said he was also dealing with tuberculosis at the time, which is just crazy. Sadly, this story takes quite a dark turn, as at age 23, after a performance and after coughing up blood, Joseph went unconscious and never woke up again. The circus refused to pay his burial expenses, and his father was unfortunately too poor to afford it, which meant that his body remained with the undertakers, who began displaying it in store windows and museums which is just horrifying to think about. Joseph's body would remain with people who never should have had it in the first place until 1989, over 80 years after his death, until it was finally released to his surviving family members who then cremated it. In our number three spot today, we have Patrick Cotter O'Brien. Patrick was born in Ireland in January of 1760, and he grew to be eight foot one, which made him one of the first people to be known to grow past eight feet tall. At 18 years old, he began working as a bricklayer because he didn't need a ladder to reach the top of the cottages like the rest of those he worked with. Like many people on this list, Patrick found himself in a life of show business where he called himself just O'Brien. It is said that he had to travel around in a carriage that was made specifically for him because of his size, and one day when his carriage was stopped by a highwayman, when this guy saw Patrick, he fled because he was terrified of him. Sadly, Patrick's size took quite a toll in his body and eventually led to his death, which occurred on September 8, 1806, when Patrick was 46 years old. In our number two spot today, we have the giant of Castlenaw. A little different for most of the people on this list, the giant of Castlenaw is a term used to refer to three bone fragments, a humerus, tibia, and femoral midshaft that were discovered by a French anthropologist in 1890. He found these bones in the sediment used to cover a Bronze Age burial tumulus that some think might even date back to the Neolithic. If his measurements and estimate are correct, whoever these bones belonged to would have been the largest human to be known to have existed. This is because, based on the bone size, he has estimated this person to have been 11 foot 6. Of course, without the rest of the bones, this is hard to confirm for sure, and it's important to note that there hasn't been a modern review done on these bones just yet. Perhaps it's something worth pursuing, however, especially if it means we could confirm the existence of a human who was 11 feet tall. Alright, that's... Pretty insane. Record breaking. Give the man a Guinness. In our number one spot today, we have Sandy Allen. Sandy lived in Shelbyville, Indiana, and her life spanned from 1955 until 2008. During her life, she was recognized by the Guinness World Records as the tallest woman in the world. She was recorded as being seven feet, seven inches tall, and her height was a result of the fact that she had a tumor on her pituitary gland that caused it to release growth hormone uncontrollably, like somewhere between 200 and 1,000 times more than usual. In 1977, 
when she was 22 years old, she underwent surgery for her condition because if she hadn't, she would have just continued to grow and grow. Throughout her life, Sandy appeared on TV, in documentaries, and even had a song written about her. Later in life, unfortunately, Sandy found herself having to use a wheelchair because her legs and back were unable to support her tall stature. Well, she passed away in 2008. In 2020, her friend and manager John Kleeman donated a collection of her memorabilia to Ripley's Museums. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Thank you.